Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another educational video. Today we are playing Vex against Vladimir in a normal game for the purpose of instructional educational. Uh, this particular matchup I decided to go first strike because I'm playing against quite a few tanks and champions I'm unable to kill with my base damage. As you guys are aware, Vlad has a lot of sustain, so I'm playing more so to generate money and play for the mid to late game than anything. But I'm going to go and defend this minion, maybe look to get some first strike money off. And keep in mind that even though we are equally trading, he has more access to sustain, so it's not always a great thing to be trading inside minion wave. Our goal is more so to play through wave manipulation, trying to get some waves pushed and look for roam opportunities if possible. This kind of depends on how it goes. But playing against the Fiddle 6, typically a 5-6 to six camp clear. We have a Jarvan on our team that has early game ganking potential, pathing towards bot side. Uh, with my wave state currently, he can't really gank Vladimir, so I'm probably just going to look to play around bot side as well. The cool thing is every time I get a nice trade, I'm getting a little bit of mana back from Mana Flow, getting some additional money from First Strike. And with this rage wave crash, I actually have the ability to bounce the way back, or I can even just go ahead and look for a bot lane roam off of this entirely. Whoops, we missed cannon, which is really bad. But we do have the ability to roam right now, or we could just go on a reset. I'm just going to go and reset here, unless they overcommit here, which they are. So we're just going to go ahead and look for this play. Roaming is always good on Vex, just because her laning is very dependent on jungle influence. I'm going to wait for her to flash and then follow it up. I'm going to kill steal it as well. Alright, so we get a free roam. Uh, fortunately, this game we were running teleport since we did not plan on playing through lanes, so I can just head back. I'm pretty much losing nothing because I initiated that roam off a of wave crash, which is always super fantastic. And we're just going to immediately segue back into mid lane with some double amps. Not a lot of mana to work with, so we need to be kind of careful for mana usage. Looks like I could have just waited a little bit. Kind of rushed the gun on that one. I was thinking I'd lose a little bit more. But it's very, very important that even though we're running first strike to generate money, that we're not just losing out on minions. Because again, being consistent farming and generating money just means we're getting two sources of income. But if I'm going to lose a bunch of CS to focus on getting trades for first strike, I am technically just losing out on money. Like, getting 20 gold from a trade or getting 21 gold from a minion, you'd pretty much always rather just get the minion gold. It's only when you can do both in combination does it really, really shine. I just used Q3, so this is a winning trade if he goes for this melee minion. And we also have minion DMAT just in case we need to use additional wave clear. I'm going to go and use it right here just because I'm going to look for a top lane dive. And that's pretty much how Vex works these days. I don't think her damage is high enough to actually play through lane state. Or through 1v1, so you kind of gotta keep looking for opportunities on the map. Unfortunately, there's no... Oh fuck, he's TPing. I'm not gonna be able to get there in time. Great cancel. And we're gonna go melee range because we've already cut him off. The worst possible thing we can do is throw E and then have it get flashed. So by leading with W, we're completely removing that situation from happening. And we're probably going to go Leandre's this game, and I'm kind of feeling the Cosmic Drive. I know I said I wasn't going to do it at the beginning, so... I'll probably just end up going Leandre's into, like, Void Staff or something like that instead. I think Cosmic Drive video would be fun uh, on itself. Alright, so if Vladimir's on a reset here, um, I have the ability to fast push the wave thanks to the minion DMAT that I have. Probably will still be too late. But the good thing is when you get back to lane first, that means you get a free roam timer. So he's not going to be back for another like five seconds. And then he's got to push out two waves before he can start matching me. So again, we just roam straight into another lane here. And we should probably swap to a sweeper at this point just because we are constantly roaming. And again, just going melee range, making sure she can't dodge anything. I know she has no flash. So the moment she invests that spell shield, she's pretty much done. We're probably going to look for a bot side pixel ward here. Now, we are technically behind in CS, but we are winning two lanes on the map due to our ganks, and we also have four KP, which is definitely worth more than the seven CS that we've missed. 
just gonna go and look for the W there to minimize some of that damage. And I do like to use my minion D-mats equally, one on each minion, but when you're playing for wave clear or just roam opportunities, you can technically just save them for cannon waves. Just depends on how you're looking at it. If I'd ignite here, I would ult in off of that fear. I just know he has access to the pool, so... We're gonna hard shove this again and look for like a bot lane room. Alright, so there's no pool available, so if I land my fear here, I'm just gonna go and ult off of it. If you throw your ult out dry, they have the ability to dodge it, so you kind of want to combo it with your own fear, or you want to make sure that you're throwing it from a undodgeable position. Anyways, we already got the plate. I, I'm i kind of worried to get a fiddle ult. Fiddle ult is probably up at 730, but I'm going to try and maximize re recall here. I think it's 1465 for Leandre's. And we're one auto attack off of the plate. Alright, so we got a massive reset here, and unfortunately we definitely should have gone Dark Seal over Amp Tome. The Dark Seal is pretty much the best time of the game just because of the gold efficiency on it being so incredibly high. And it synergizes greatly with Vex's playstyle, so we're just going to sell Double Potion. We haven't really used them anyways. Alright, we're pretty much maxed out. If you are in a matchup where you do need extra move speed, I'd recommend swapping out Magical Footwear for like Stopwatch. Because running tier 2 boots makes it infinitely easier to create these roam timers without being punished. Why are you so small? Because my ego's small. But Vlad has first move, so we're gonna go and ping that he could potentially move here. He's staying in lane. Bot lane is overextended, so if I hard shove this lane, I can run straight towards bot side. And that's basically what it comes down to. If you're playing in a matchup where you have no solo kill pressure, just create opportunities elsewhere for your wave management. Because every time I shove this lane out, they have to respect the fact that I am currently missing on the map or they will lose. Alright, that's a little bit unfortunate, but... There's no way Velkaz will be able to push this in without fucking over Ezreal. But again, am I losing anything mid for losing? Or for leaving? I lost nothing. Because I crashed my wave first. Every time I've left this lane, I've basically lost the minimum amount just by playing my waves correctly. There's some stuff that Vlad could be doing to punish me, but... When you're playing against lower end players, they aren't going to penalize every mistake that you make, which means that you get a lot of free room to operate with on Vex. So once again, take a look at my side lanes, ungankable, bot lanes, MIA. I'm gonna hard shove this and look to cover the top lane gank, potentially. It's not gonna happen because they're both full HP, so I'm just gonna continue to play through mid lane, try to get some first strike money or plates. And when I don't have fear up currently, I like to throw up blind E's or Q's, just because they're pretty much free to cast. If he goes for this minion, we'll look. And we're gonna actually flash into him here. And we're actually going to go and kill ourselves here, for the meme. We're putting this shutdown onto Alistar, and I'm also denying this entire wave. I'm going to end up losing the plate most likely, but this is honestly not that bad at all. The issue that I have with Vex, personally, is that the damage output is too low to feel enjoyable to me because it feels too Feast or Famine. I don't like feeling punished for playing well, so if my team falls behind early and Vex is unplayable, it doesn't feel good. You fall behind on Syndra, it's an expectation, it's fine, and you still can play out any game while scaling. Vex's scaling is just so giga bad that it's almost unplayable in a lot of these situations. Again, I believe we saw the pool. I wasn't paying 100% attention. We're gonna look for a max range combo here if we can. Off the slow from the E. But no ultimate right now. I could technically look for a roam with base abilities, but it's a little bit less consistent. Top lane slow pushing towards us. Definitely gankable if I shove this in. But once you build this massive item lead, the enemy mid laner can't really contest you without putting themselves in bad situations. So every time that you get these initiated roams off, it's just unstoppable for you. I think we last saw Fiddle bot side, so I'm just gonna run this down the whole way. Yeah, and I have tier two boots and he has nothing. Unfortunately, this one might be a little bit more dangerous. Missing that Q is really bad. 
Leandre's just doing so much work here, though. I'm gonna wait for my fear just to make sure I land everything. Alright, I fucked myself. <laughs> I could have just queued. I don't know why I played it so slow there. I could have just thrown all my skills and probably had them back up before the pull. Now, keep in mind, it is a normal game. I have no clue what rank any of these players are. I don't check. The purpose is basically to show you how Vex is meant to be played and what are abusable windows against bad players, or new players, or lower ranked players. Because the, the reality is that when you watch High Elo gameplay, it's not always representative of what a real experience is in League of Legends, especially in the lower ranks. Like, the matchups are much more... Um, more nuanced. The windows of opportunities aren't really there, but when you're playing against lower end players, you get thousands of opportunities to operate through. It's more important for you to learn how to diagnose those or identify those mistakes that you can punish. That's kind of the problem with high elo content is that it's not always structured in a way that's informational, even if it is from the educational perspective. But here again, we shove mid lane in. We can look for a room here with Jarvan. Why not? Does Dark Harvest Vex work? No. If you play Dark Harvest Vex, I just assume you're trolling. Great fear. We're gonna play front to back. I just need my J4 to play for vision here. Probably getting fiddle ulted. Wow, what an ult. I think we still get at least two here. We actually missed the fiddle six. That was such a well played fight from them. I can proc electrocute at every stage of my game, but I cannot proc Dark Harvest at every stage of my game. But taking a look at first strike, we've already earned 300 gold at the 15 minute mark. I'd say like around 200 would probably be more consistent to say. Okay, we gotta get out of here. What a turnaround. Great play. We should play for Dragon here just to get our second win con going. Like team fighting is obviously very great for us with um, Vex Jarvan. But we need to make these kills transition to something meaningful, like objectives, in the terms of dragons, rift, towers. If we keep playing for kills and we fail to win like anything meaningful, then it's just a waste of time. It stays in ARAM, exactly. I think Dark Harvest is best in slot for ARAM. Um, no TP here, I won't be able to match this. There's actually no objectives here in the bot lane, we've already taken tier 2 tower, so being here is also kind of a waste of time besides farming. Want to play? Gaming Warlord over here. Welcome back, Zian. I hope you enjoyed your days off. I did. Thank you so much. I'm gonna look for play here. Um, I could look for an ult from Fog of War and Reaction Time test him. Something that you can do in lower elos very often. But again, you miss that ultimate. It's now a two minute cooldown that you're waiting on. That's the issue of throwing max range ults is that it's not consistent. And when you lose that opportunity to make plays for the next 90 seconds, you always feel it. But we have enough money for our second item, so it's better to reset and make sure that we're full damage potential. It's a lot of our playmaking is dependent on having that damage available to us. In terms of third items, we can go Zhanya's, we can go Rabadon's, we can go Void. They're not really itemizing magic resist against us because we're only two AP champions and Vel'Koz does mostly true damage. So it makes sense that they're building more armor. But we're back on the map, looking for Rift Herald. Next objectives in three minutes are Dragon and Baron. If we'd like to continue progressing the game state, then tier two top would probably be really nice to acquire. I'm going to shove out this mid wave and then just look to rotate in the top. When you're playing a teamfight champion like Vex, even though we can play 1-3-1 where we catch these side waves, um, sometimes it's just better to stay grouped with your teammates so that they deny enemy counterplay. Because staying 4-1 is always really fantastic. Alright, that is the surrender. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. That is First Strike Vex, playing for wave manipulation, something that everyone is capable of doing. Hope you guys had a good one. Bye-bye.